Hey guys, from Ever Arrow, Season 5, Episode 14, The Sin Eater, and I was definitely really looking forward to this episode. I've really been enjoying this season, as you guys know, and what I was really looking forward to here is that, yes, I think this season has been really well done, because it's been very back to basics, but it's been quite a while since we had a Prometheus-centered episode, and I was really hoping this would be that episode, and let me just say, I thought this episode was good. I, I didn't think this was a bad episode. It's just because of how uh, high quality the season has been, this was a bit of a letdown. I mean, this episode, I didn't think it was bad. I thought we had some great stuff going on this episode, definitely. Um, just as a whole, to me, didn't really fit as one episode, and I'll talk about why, but let's just get into this episode, and... Uh, you know, where I think we're at, because we definitely need to have some huge, substantial things happen here, um, but, you know, regarding this main plot, that really is what kind of pissed me off, but not, not really pissed me off, just let me down, but let's get into this episode, because I definitely do want to talk about it, and I really love the opening of this episode, I think the opening is one of the best openings uh, of this entire season, because we see the suburban home in Old Paul City, Oliver and Diggle are parking outside, and Diggle says it's the house that Claiborne bought for his mistress, so we get back to Claiborne in this episode, and remember, Oliver is pretty much, uh, you know, he is, he's, he's very insistent on the fact that Claiborne, uh, is Prometheus, and there's really no question about it, you know, he thinks, so, oh yeah, Claiborne has to be Prometheus, there's no other possible suspects, you know, Claiborne's someone who's been after Oliver for a long time, he's been getting revenge on him, he knows about the list, it really all links together, so I like that Oliver is kind of ahead of the game here, where he thinks he knows who he is, and he rings the bell, and Amanda Westfield answers the door, she knows who Oliver is and lets him in, and she explains her son may have been the serial killer terrorizing Star City, and Amanda says she hasn't seen her son since Claiborne's funeral, so again, there's a big possibility that he very well could be uh, Prometheus, her son could be him, and she tells Oliver that she left Star City, because there was nothing there for her there, um, you know, there was just a bunch of grief and regrets, and she just didn't want to be there anymore, so Oliver explains that her son erased all trace of himself from the internet, Amanda asks what happens when Oliver finds him, and Oliver says that he wants him to get help, and, you know, he genuinely wants to help him, like, he doesn't want to kill him, he wants to help him, and she figures that Oliver wants to cage up her son, like the animal that the animal that killed Claiborne, and refuses to help, uh, you know, she really feels that Oliver is just someone who likes to shelter people, and someone who likes to keep people held prisoner, and not really, you know, um, you know, tried to reprieve them at any point, so Amanda tells Oliver that she won't change her mind and orders him out, so I don't know if that means that there's something going on there, or that she just doesn't want Oliver to help out her son, but I thought this was a pretty good opening, you could tell that Oliver was intent on getting information on Prometheus, and it just didn't really work out, I like that he definitely is trying, which is something different than some of the other scenes have been at this point, you know, we still wouldn't, there's a lot of things we still wouldn't know about Damien Dark, we already know quite a lot of, well, we don't know a lot about Prometheus, but I like the way Oliver's starting to put these clues together, that was a very well done opening, and uh, it's very misleading for what is really, in hindsight, an average episode. So, a prison bus is transferring several female prisoners, and here we get to my main flaw of the episode, because this prison somehow includes both China White, Carrie Cutler, and Liza Warner. And that, in general, is insane to think about. The idea that three highly, uh, just, uh, just, uh, the three highly trained, uh, highly dangerous, lethal, uh, serial killers, and, you know, people who've caused a lot of damage within Star City would be released, and let alone would be released together. I mean, that in general just felt so ridiculous, and it really broke a lot of the realism of the season. This has been a quite realistic season. This really didn't go with that. Claire Carrie gets up, claims that she's stretching her legs, and a guard tells her to sit down, she flirts him, and I like the character of Q, but I'm not gonna lie, she's definitely one of the more uh, outworldly elements of this show. And she shoots the driver dead, Carrie tells the other person to get out, and once they leave, Liza says that it's time to return home and drives the bus towards Star City. So Oliver and Diggle return to the bunker, and they tell the others what happened. Felicity hacks Amanda's email to see if she is in contact with her son, and she gets it, but warns that there's a lot of data for her to go through. So basically, she's gonna try to see what she can get on Amanda, and Dinah tells Oliver and Diggle about their, the escape. Oliver says that he's gonna find them, and Diggle asks Dinah if she's ready for her swearing and ceremony, assuring that it's no small thing, and she agrees. So the next day, an aide reminds Oliver that the city council has a vote scheduled after the swearing-in ceremony, and Susan comes in, and Oliver apologizes for her for missing their last few dinner dates, and finally, after all this information she's done, she finally asks if he's Green Arrow. Now, we know this is something that she has been acquiring information about, she already knows the answer, she just wants a confirmation, and Oliver jokingly says yes, and tells her that he thought that she was joking, he jokes back, he dismisses her conclusion as insane, and says no for the record, and... 
Honestly, as much as Oliver wants to try to cover up that identity, I mean, after being the Arrow for five years, there's going to be a lot of red flags, and there's going to be a lot of similarities that uh, people know about. I mean, first of all, you know, first things first, the Arrow was arrested two years ago. I mean, do you guys remember that plot where Oliver was a fugitive and Roy was the one to bail him out? You know, the Hood was arrested for that, so they definitely know that this is someone who's been on the run for a while, and... Basically, Oliver apparently accepts his denial, and he leaves for the ceremony, and uh, I really did like the way that was done. And Susan and Oliver really do come to a boiling point in this episode, and I know a lot of people haven't really been to this arc, but I really liked it. It's very much reminded, it's really shown Oliver struggle with his identity, and I definitely did like seeing that. So then we cut to five years ago, and at the hospital, Oliver suggests to Anatoly that they can go after Gregor at the bathhouse, and I'm guessing that we're done with the uh, uh, Talia Ogul stuff, which I hope is not true. I really do love the actress, but we don't see her in this episode, and Anatoly warns that we'll need an army, and Oliver says he's going to stay there until they can take out Gregor and protect the Bradva, and his mentor warns if he's going to leave, and Oliver explains he has to get back to his life. Anatoly says that Oliver is a sin eater, hence the title, like a man who has historically eats the sins of the dead to take them on as his own, and yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty apt description uh, for Oliver. That's very much what he ends up doing. He takes people that are dead and he basically tries to end them and by, you know, basically figuratively eating them. And Oliver interrupts to say he's the orderly passed by several times in the last 10 minutes and figures that he is one of Gregor's men. Anatoly says that it's time to go, and I really did like the way this was set up. The flashbacks continue to kill the season. This episode is no different. So Oliver then swears Dinah in, everyone applauds, and it's a really nice moment. I forgot to say in the last episode that Dinah uh, did what she could to become a police officer. It's a bit rushed, but they did a great job of setting up, you know, how much Dinah cared about that and how much she's wanted to be a police officer and how adamant she was. So everyone ends up applauding. I thought it was a really nice moment. And afterward, Thea asks Oliver if everything's okay with Susan. And uh, if you guys thought that Thea was wasted last week, that's nothing uh, you guys, have, uh, this is the episode where Thea finally gets back in the forefront. I was very happy to see that because one of my problems this season is that while I think Thea's been great, they haven't really had a specific arc for her to do. This episode, though, this is the kind of stuff I want to see her do. Because Oliver tells Thea what Susan asked earlier and assures his sister that he handled it. And Lance tells Oliver that Warner escaped just as Felicity texts Oliver the trio's location. He says he'll deal with three women like he did before. But Lance insists that it's personal and that he needs to assist Oliver on this. You know, he has a personal bone to pick with Warner. And that was one of my favorite storylines in season four, don't get me wrong. But it was only Warner in this episode. And he also has personal beef with China White, as we know. So... It does get a little clunky here. So when Arrow and uh, and Lance arrive at the address, they find t dead Triad men. Overwatch hacks the security camera, turns the footage of China and Warner and Cubit, then kill the Triad man. And Lance says that they have to stop the woman before more bodies drop. And uh, again, it's it's just a little bit crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And to me, as good as I did like seeing Liza Warner and China White uh, at this particular point, I just kind of felt like an afterthought. And I'll get into that, but. Later back in the bunker, the team reviews the footage. It shows China questioning a man about the depository, and they figure the trio is looking for something in storage, and Oliver says that they have to find them and stop them because he doesn't really know what they're do what you know what exactly they want. He knows they've actually they've come for some sort of, you know, inheritance or something like that, and he's gonna do what he can to figure out what that is. So we then cut to five years ago where Oliver helps Antoli down the corridor. A man steps out, opens fire, he comes after them, Oliver takes him down, then shoots as another man comes after them, and they get to the basement and take cover as Gregor's men move in. Really well done action. Again, that's something that flashbacks have been killing this season in terms of action. They've done a really great job with that. But back in the present, Frank gets an anonymous letter. Once he reads it, he tells assistant Chapman to summon the entire ACU for a meeting. And I did like seeing these two, even though um, I forgot... <laughs> Excuse me. I forgot um, that they actually were characters within the show. We haven't seen them in so long, so I actually forgot about them. But Thea arrives at the bunker, talks to Felicity. She says that Susan suspects that Oliver's arrow, and both women agree the reporter won't drop it. So they really want to do something about it to make sure that they can withhold that secret as long as possible. So Felicity hacks into Susan's computer and finds all the information that she's gathered connecting Oliver to Arrow. And even if Felicity deletes it, Susan will get the information from the same source. And what they're doing.
doing is obviously not safe at all. And the episode does do a good job and not trying to condone what they're doing, but showing that Thea's, you know, undying devotion for doing anything for Oliver. And I really did love seeing that here. It's something we haven't seen in a very long time because all of season four was Thea trying to be the hero and trying to assist Oliver. And I'd much rather see her protecting Oliver in the legal world than in the crime world. And I think in, after this episode, you guys will definitely agree with me on that. So, Mr. Terrific and Wild Dog spot the Triad Men, James Wan. He gets into his car, they grab him, demands to know where the depository is, and James says the depository holds the hundred million that Tobias Church got from the Amertech deal, and I'm like, why are we getting back to Tobias Church? I mean, he's dead. Why, why are we continuing this? And he doesn't know where she is, and Wild Dog punches him unconscious, and Arrow and Lanson go to a Lowe's House Zone's money, money laundering facility, and Wild Dog and Mr. Terrific are stalking out the Burns and Nellies, and Dinah and Spartan are watching the Broadva, Oliver suggests they call Dinah Black Canary, and Lance said he's fine with that as long as she does Laurel Proud, because he really does want to make her the new Black Canary. You know, he feels they need one, and I do agree. I think Black Canary adds a whole other dynamic to the team. We know she's able to do the, you know, the, the Banshee scream, so, uh, you know, the Sonic scream, so she they really, they, there really should be no problem with that. But they hear gunshots up ahead, they go to investigate, and the three women take out the gangsters. Cupid points out they still don't have the money. Warner says they gave the name or of someone who does know where the money is. Assures them that everything is going as planned. And they're not, they don't really give a reason why Cupid and China want to do this, but whatever. Arrow and Lance arrive, order them to surrender. Warner fires at Arrow, and Lance goes after her as she runs out, while Arrow right, fights Cupid and China. So outside, Warner tells uh, Lance that he's a liar. She's turned herself in based on what he said, but then she saw a news report about him working with Dark, and why is this still a thing? I mean, Dark is dead. This information is irrelevant at this point. I mean, even if Lance was in cahoots with Dark, is it really that big of a deal at this point? No, it's not. I mean, yeah, we know that Lance was working with Dark, but Dark was also playing on, you know, uh, hypnotizing the entire world and then blowing everyone up. So there really isn't much of a reason to rein Lance in, even though Warner is so focused on that throughout this entire episode, there really isn't a reason to do that. And there's not really anything she can do to, do, to, you know, to fix that. So Lance says the Dark th threatened Dinah and insists that what he's doing and what Warner is doing is not at all the same thing. So she says that he's doing whatever it takes, fires and runs, and an ACU assault squad drops in. Cupid and China run off. Lear tells Arrow that they've ordered, they're, they're under orders to arrest him for Billy's murder. Now, here's where things get interesting because Arrow fires a flare arrow to cover his escape, and you knew this is going to come up at some point because Prometheus isn't going to turn himself in, obviously. He's going to try to pin it on Arrow, which... I really do like, and a lot of people could say it's similar to what Ra's al Ghul did. Uh, the difference is here, Ra's al Ghul just straight up killed people. Like, he went out and killed everyone that he could think of, and this one is a much bigger deal. This is Oliver, you know, the Arrow being arrested for Billy's murder. Not Oliver being arrested, but Arrow being arrested. And at the bunker, Oliver tells the others that the ACU found out about Billy. They tell Lance that Prometheus orchestrated things so Oliver would kill Billy, and Chase ended up being the one to cover it up. So... Lance wants to know, wants to talk to Frank, but Oliver says that he has to handle it because he's the mayor, and that's the kind of thing that Oliver needs to do, and I really do like seeing Oliver try to be the mayor, and trying to be as good as one as he possibly can be, and try to handle things in a mayorly fashion, I definitely did like seeing that, and realizing that there are just certain things that the Green Arrow can't solve, you know, such as, you know, whether it was... Uh, last week's thing with uh, the gunshot or what's going on here. I really do like seeing that's a whole other element to the season that we have not that had in the show, and I really do love that. So the next day, Oliver, Chase, and, and Lance call Frank into a comments room. Frank says that Arrow is a person of interest in Billy's murder, and he shows them the letter inside is an M.E. report showing that Billy was killed with an arrow like the arrow uses. So there's a very good chance it could be the arrow. Now, we know that's because Prometheus is using literally the exact same arrows, and the original report said the cause of death was undetermined. So Frank figures that that's a cover-up, and Oliver says that he has it on good authority that Arrow wasn't responsible, but, it's not, but he's not at liberty to say. And you can see Oliver He's trying to hold back his guilt in this episode because they think he definitely does still have that guilt for Billy. Even though he's not the one who straight up killed Billy, he did kind of for get, you know, get Billy killed because, again, he kind of ignored that that was going to be a problem. So Frank refused to drop it and excuse himself, and once he's gone, the men wonder who sent the report to Frank, and Oliver dismisses Chase and then tells Lance that Prometheus sent the report. The envelope was postmarked from Apollo City, and Oliver figures that Prometheus is pushing back against Oliver visiting Amanda, and he's getting his revenge on Oliver via that. So that basically says that Prometheus has to be related to Amanda, or at least working with her. I mean, that has to say that, that, that there's no other question about it, right? It has to be 
Prometheus, but Susan then texts Oliver to meet her in his office. He goes in and Susan says she got fired. Her producer received an anonymous tip that she plagiarized her stor stories for the last year. Her laptop's filled with incriminating evidence, and Susan figures it's connected to her, asking Oliver if he was Arrow. Oliver says he doesn't know anything about it, and Susan asks if he's going to deny that she's Arrow. She says he has a broad of a tattoo on his chest and photos showing Arrow in Russia at the same time that Oliver was there. So, there's no question about it, he has to be the Green Arrow, and however, she can't go public with any of it because she's been discredited, and figures that Oliver set the whole thing up, and she walks out, obviously because she thinks that he's the one who's responsible for this. So, Oliver, in, I think, a very smart move, goes to Felicity, thinking that Felicity's the one responsible, and she quickly tells him that it's not him, it's Thea that did it, and I actually really like this twist. I like that Fel Felicity didn't do this on her own. Last season, she would have, because she complained about everything, and she did everything for Oliver, but I like this was not her doing. This was Thea telling Felicity to do it, and I definitely did like seeing it. It was a good turning point for Felicity and shows the different type of relationship these two really do have this season. So, Gregor enters the basement and says he will spare Anatoly if he hands over Oliver. Oliver prepares to surrender, telling Anatoly that Gregor will kill both of them, and Anatoly refused to let Oliver suffer for his sins, but Oliver goes out anyway, which is very similar to how he's handling things as the Arrow in the present day. Again, a great way of connecting these two things together. See, these little subtle things, they just, they're finding great ways to connect things together, and I'm absolutely loving it. I love the way the show is finding ways to connect things together. It's been one of the best things, um, you know, it's been one of the best things that I think Arrow's done this season that really has improved it over the past two, and I was very impressed with the way that was done here. So Thea then visits Lance, who says that Warner is his mess to clean up. He tells Thea about why Warner turned crooked again. Thea tells him that Warner is a criminal. She says that Lance has to stop taking responsibility for other people's sins and says that she committed her own sin, which is kind of what Oliver's doing in the past, but however, Thea tells Lance not to worry about it and deal with Warner because she's a criminal. So that night, the three women go after some Bertinelli things. China kills the first one. Cupid and Warner take down the others. And when the fourth one, Enzo uh, Russo, tries to run... Cuba brings him down with a bolo arrow, and Warner demands the location of the money. She assures her teammates that the ACU is all over ACU, and they have the thug take them to the depository. So, Oliver then calls Thea to his office, tells her to get that Susan got fired, and he's obviously very pissed about it, and he says that Thea should have come to him. Thea says they would have had the same conversation. Oliver would insist that Susan wasn't going to out him. You know, she, he really does trust Susan, which I do think he's putting a little too much trust in her. I think she's kind of seemed shady since day one. That's just me. But she, and remember, I mean, back in the first half of the season, she was trying to tarnish his career as mayor, so I really would not trust her at this point. I mean, the whole idea of him getting with her was so he could try to get, you know, get away from any bad blood those two really did have and get and dissuade any of her fears of him being a, you know, a bad mayor and being, you know, unqualified for it. So really, I mean, I, I, if I was Oliver, I wouldn't be surprised if she, uh, was gonna expose me, but she tells her brother that she was gonna try to, that she was trying to keep Oliver's hands clean. Oliver points out that Thea just blew up Susan's life. He says that Thea knew what she was doing and wonders who does that to a person. It's, it's a really great scene. I really do like the way it was done, and before Thea can respond, Lance comes in. Thea says she's done. She leaves, and it's one of the best scenes between Thea and Oliver in a while. I really like this dynamic here where he doesn't want Thea's help because he doesn't need her help in this regard. I mean, she did this completely Completely on her own. He didn't tell her to do this, and I like that Oliver was upset about her, was, was upset about this. So she leaves. Lance tells Oliver the woman abducted Enzo. He figures that Enzo knows where the depository is and just that Arrow go after them, and Oliver says the police should handle it, insists that Prometheus hasn't given him any other choice, and he reminds him that, uh, that Dark and Slade didn't give Oliver a choice either, and Oliver says that it's different because he was the one who fired the arrows into Billy, killing him. You know, that was for me. That was him. His friend repeats Thea's words about not taking on refusal to take on other people's sins. He tells Oliver that justice isn't being served. Oliver agrees to have Felicity scam for Enzo's phone while he talks to Frank and makes sure that Billy's death wasn't for nothing. You know, he wants to make sure this was a good thing um, that, you know, that Prometheus killed Billy. So Oliver goes to Frank's office, tells him that Prometheus manipulated Arrow into killing Billy. Chase covered it up, and Oliver says that Arrow told him. So Frank wonders why he should believe Arrow, and if Oliver's trying to, you know, keep cover here and try not to, you know, make it seem that he's the Arrow, he's really not doing a good job at this point, and that's understandable. I mean, after so many years, it's got to be hard hiding that identity, and I think right now, Oliver's not doing the best job of that. I mean, I think 
As time goes on, more and more people are going to find out, and Oliver says that he knows that Arrow has helped Star City, and when Frank points out that Arrow still killed Billy, Oliver says that Arrow will have to live with that for the rest of his life, and all he's asking is that Frank doesn't let him stop Green Arrow from being the hero that the city needs, and Frank says we'll have to think about it, and Oliver leaves, and as Oliver leaves, Frank, uh, Felicity calls to say that she has Enzo's address, and when he tells her send it, Felicity points out that Arrow is wanted by the police, and Oliver repeats his request. So at the bunker, Felicity tells Curtis, Renee, and Dinah where Enzo is, which is at Oak Hill and Memorial C Cemetery, and that Diggle's on the way. So they head out. Felicity gives Dinah Laurel's mask, and at the station, Frank tells the ACU officers that a unit has spotted Arrow heading for the cemetery. The ACU will be there when he finds the woman, and the team arrive at the cemetery, move into position. Meanwhile, the woman enter a vault. They check the crypt for the, with the least amount of dust. The hundred thousands inside, and the woman grab it and head out. And the new Black Canary blasts them. The rest of the team move in. Cuba tries to run Spartan fires warning shot wild dog tackles her some really good action here i definitely will say i like the set pieces warner says that taking the city back and their hired thugs arrived the team remains returns fire and wild dog takes a shot to the leg black canary attacks china mr terrific then fights warner the acu then arrives china tells arrow that she's going to enjoy watching them take them down frank shoots her in the shoulder and has officers arrest the woman and their men and it was a good fight i just thought it was a bit too short like it was really cut short but they all ignore a green arrow Green Arrow thanks Frank for his help. Frank says the mayor vouched for him, and Green Arrow tells him that he'll have to deal with killing Billy for the rest of his life. And as he leaves, Frank remembers that Oliver said the same thing to him. So he's really starting to put things together here. That, you know, if Oliver said that, and Green Arrow said that, holy shit, they might be the same person. So later at the station, Lance goes to see Warner in the interrogation room. He assures her that his conscience is clear, and tells her that he's not going to use other people's sins to justify his own. And as he leaves, Dinah asks if he's okay. Lance says that he's fine, and Dinah says that she's not ready to take, she's actually not ready to take Laurel's place, and I like this. I like that she doesn't want to be the Black Canary because we're not just looking at her as the Black Canary replacement. She wants to be a little bit more than that, and he tells her that Laurel will want someone to carry on in her place, and I'm interested in seeing where this is going to go. I think she kind of wants to be something better. I think definitely she is a better player than being the Black Canary. I don't know what that's all about, but I think that definitely is interesting. So Oliver visits Thea in her office, says that they need to talk about what happened. He says that Susan isn't returning his calls, and Thea apologized for screwing up. Oliver tells that she made a choice, not a mistake, and she reminded him of something that Moira would do. And he figures that Moira would have done the same thing, but she didn't always make the right choices, uh, such as taking her own life. I mean, that certainly wasn't a great choice she made, but Oliver tells Thea that he's worried about Thea right now sits down with her, and again, it's a really nice brother-sister moment that we don't really get to see a ton of on the show, and they've really done a good job exemplifying that this season. So, we cut to five years ago where Oliver steps out, he puts his gun down, Gregor assures him that Anatoly won't be harmed, Oliver grabs Gregor's lieutenant and picks up his discarded gun, he shoots Gregor's men, one of their guns lands near Anatoly, when Anatoly reaches for it, Gregor steps in his hand and prepares to shoot him, and then we get to the end of the episode, which is quite shocking, where Chase tells Oliver that he's got a heads up on something, Oliver's assistant tells Oliver to turn on the TV. Bethany Snow is reporting the mayor's office or the false fiction of autopsy results to protect the identity of Billy's killer. She notes it could trigger impeachment procedures against Oliver, and Oliver is pretty sure that this must mean this is the end of his administration, that now they have this bad blood in them, there's no way he's going to stay as mayor, and that is the way this episode ends. Let's get this episode and where we're going to go for us this season. So, like I said, guys, while I did think that the ending to this episode was extremely strong, this was a bit of a mixed bag for me. I thought that all the stuff involving Oliver and uh, Susan and Thea, that was great. I think it was a very well done plot, especially seeing Oliver want to handle this in a diplomatic way and at no point thinking that he has to try to take, you know, take on Susan as a green arrow and do something cheesy like that which Oliver probably would have done in Season 3 or 4. They probably would have had a reason for Oliver to confront her as the Arrow, which would have been dumb. I'm glad they didn't go in that direction. I'm glad that Thea didn't kill her either. I think tarnishing her career is way worse than actually killing her because now that's something else that Oliver has to deal with, the guilt that he is responsible for uh, Susan, which he's not. You know, Thea was the one who did that. She was the one who hacked into everything, and she was doing it for Oliver. He never intended for her to do anything about that. He just told her to, you know, do or to, you know, uh, subdue her a bit and make sure that Susan doesn't acquire any sort of, you know, information on him. But it was too late. As we know, she was doing all she could to dig up information on Oliver, and it was just too late for him to... Um, 
you know, get her to, to, to basically try to hide from her. He just couldn't do it anymore because she already knew what his secret was and just was only a matter of time before she found out. And I thought it was definitely interesting to see. What I liked even more, though, uh, was seeing this ending here where Oliver might be done as a mayor, which is quite shocking, but I think it's the right direction to take the show in, especially because, as we know, Prometheus is doing whatever he can to ruin Oliver's life. He's not just trying to tarnish his career as the Arrow. He's just trying to ruin his life in general. He'll do whatever he can to fuck with him, you know, kill his friends if he has to, kill someone that's close to Oliver. And I, Oliver's really starting to see that Prometheus means business, and I think he knows that. But it's really starting to, you know, make Oliver struggle a bit because Oliver's thinking that he, you know, he's taking the blame for a lot of people's other sins, which was a bit heavy-handed with how uh, big that message really did impact the entire episode. But I'm very interested in seeing where this is going to go, and especially who is doing this because I can't imagine that Prometheus is doing it all. I mean, sure, we've seen that Prometheus is kind of the mass manipulator, but I do think he has a few henchmen. I mean, anyone remember, uh, you know, people remember Evelyn. She's definitely working with him still. You know, she's still out there. Armistice, uh... We know that uh, Vigilante's still out there. We don't know who Vigilante is, but he's returning in next week's episode, so we know that he's definitely still out there. And then, of course, there's this whole thing with, uh, you know, Claiborne's son. Uh, Claiborne's son could very well be connected to Prometheus. He, he could even be Prometheus. He's of the right age. He has the right uh, backstory. There's really... A lot of things to point him in the direction of being Prometheus. So I'm interested in seeing where that's going to go. But my more interesting theory is that Chase is actually Prometheus. I, I think he is because we don't know a ton about him. And if there's one thing I know about these shows on DC is that they like to take characters that are relatively good and aren't really looked at as, you know, they're kind of looked at as neutral. Like, they're not looked at as a great character or anything, but they're looked at as someone who's well-respected and someone who is well-known within Oliver's community and someone who Oliver really does trust. And I think Chase is going is very much uh, that person that's going to be guilty for it because we don't know a ton about him. They haven't really given him any backstory. I think that's intentional. I think it's because he is, in fact, Prometheus. And if that's where they're going to take this, I think it's exactly the right direction. Because I heard in the comics, he ends up being vigilante. So this not only would shock everyone, but it would give Chase a lot more to do, and I, I do like seeing that, because right now, Chase is quite neutral. He's just kind of like on the show. I don't really have much opinion on him, so I really do want to see them do something with Chase's character, because I think that's going to be very interesting. Now, my problem with this episode is everything else going on. I thought that while I did like this whole idea with Lance, you know, feeling guilty for what happened with Damian Dark, it came one season too late. I mean, we're over this. We had that plot last year. We don't need it again. And I just felt that seeing these three characters felt very redundant. I get it that they want to use Cupid at least once a season, and I'm fine with that. I think she's totally the kind of villain you can do uh, once a season, but they just didn't really do anything in this episode. What was China and Cupid's reasons for going after Arrow? We didn't really see what that was. Uh, you know, Warner clearly had a reason for that, but Cupid and, uh, you know, uh, Cupid and China just kind of tagged along. They didn't really have a specific reason as to why they really wanted to get revenge here. And that really did not work for me as well as it, as well as they wanted it to. It was very clunky in that regard as well, especially because the, the fight literally lasted like two minutes and then they just were arrested. So that really did feel very unnecessary. I kind of wish it was just Warner because Warner, I think, is great on her own. I love the actress who plays her. I've loved her since Hannibal. Uh, I think she's great on the show and I want to see more of her. But again, I just didn't really feel like we needed needed China and Cupid in there, so that definitely did plummet the episode a bit, and I honestly felt they didn't really need to be in here. I think this entire episode could have just been about Oliver doing his mayoral things, and I get that last week we had something like that, but this one even more so, you know, Oliver having to deal with his information being leaked down, trying to withhold. I think we could have had an entire episode on that, and uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the direction that this actually went. I don't really think we needed these three villains in here. It just felt like a little bit of a weak choice for them to do that, and when the show is as strong as it is, I just, I'm I don't need these, you know, uh, separate type of, you know, episodic storytelling because the season has not really been that. The season's been a lot more consistent, a lot more serial driven, and I've really loved that. I love it. It hasn't really tread, uh, you know, treks to uh, that uh, that more episodic direction that, say, The Flash has been taking. I, I like that they've been going in their own direction. Overall, guys, definitely did enjoy this episode. I just don't think this is as strong as some of the other episodes have been, but I'm still going to give Arrow Season 5, Episode 14, uh, The Sin Eater, a 3.5 out of 5 or a B. So for guys who made this episode of Arrow, let me know what you guys thought this episode overall. Loved your thoughts on it. Did you like this episode? Did you like where we're headed uh, with the Prometheus stuff? Do you think this is really going to ruin Oliver's mayoral career? But that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in the next video. will be for Legion, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.